Hi everyone, this is Sultan with Rex Theme, and in this video, I'll show you how you can generate a product feed for Frugo. So let's get started. Now, Frugo is one of the largest marketplaces out there. In fact, it is one of the largest multinational marketplaces that operates in over 46 different countries. And right now, it has over 26 million active users. All right. So this is a marketplace where you as an e-commerce store owner can easily promote your products and get great results of. In fact, it's proven that uh, most e-commerce store owners have already seen 10% more revenue just by promoting through Frugo. All right. Now, in this video, I'll show you how you can generate a product feed to upload your e-commerce product to the Frugo marketplace, uh, which will include the correct product attributes. And I'm going to use one of our plugins product feed manager for WooCommerce to generate that feed real quick. All right. So now before I go over to the plugin, let me just go over the basic uh, product attributes that are mandatory to submit uh, with all of your products when you upload your products to Frugo. Now what you're looking at is a list of the required product attributes that you need to submit on Frugo. So this uh, include the product ID, which is a unique product ID, the product SKU, uh, a GTIN, which can be an EN or UPC as well, uh, the brand name, the category. All right. Now for category, Frugo has their own category list. So you need to submit the category in which uh, your product falls under in Frugo. All right. Now to do this, you don't need to change the categories in your store. Uh, we have a feature in Product Feed Manager for WooCommerce called Category Mapping, with which you can map your product's categories into Frugo's categories easily. I'll show that uh, later on in this video. Uh, then you need to submit the image URL, stock status. Uh, basically, you can mention if it's in stock or out of stock or not available, but we suggest you only submit products that are in stock, all right? Uh, then there is the product title, the description, the normal price. Now you do have the option to submit a normal price with VAT or without VAT, but it's ideal to submit it with VAT because uh, if you're in EU, in most countries, you do have VAT applicable. So it's better to submit the price with VAT uh, so that the person can know the exact amount they need to pay. All right. And then comes the VAT rate. You need to mention that. Uh, rate of VAT that is applicable to the product in the place that you're selling or where you're uh, selling from. Okay, so now uh, let me just go over to the plugin uh, for Product Feed Manager for WooCommerce to show you how you can generate the Frugal Product Feed real quick. Now, as you can see, I'm on the dashboard and I already have the plugin Product Feed Manager for WooCommerce installed and activated. You can see right here. Once you have that plugin there, you'll see this menu called product feed uh, in the dashboard menus. OK, now the first thing to do here is to enable Frugo as a merchant. So just go to the settings. And here, go to the merchants tab. Now, here you can see all the supported merchants of our plugin are listed in one place. What you can do is you can search here by using command F or control F, depending on what PC you're using, and then search for Frugo. And once you find Frugo, just click on Enable. And once it's enabled, scroll up and go to the Controls tab. And here, click on Purge Cache. And once this is done, you're now ready to generate a feed for Frugo. All right. Now, click on Add New Feed. And this will take you to a blank product feed where you will start creating the feed generation for Frugo. So initially, give a name to the feed. So I'll just name it Frugo Feed. Next, you have the option to choose what products you want in the feed. If you want all the products to be included, you just choose all published products. And if you have a fixed refresh interval, then you can just choose uh, which interval uh, you want the feed to be updated depending on changes you make on the store, all right? And apart from this, the rest of the options are already configured. Uh, you don't really need to worry about that unless you have some exceptions you need to change them. All right. So for now, just leave it as is. And if you scroll down to the merchant type, just click on it and choose Frugo. And once you choose Frugo, you will see that below all the required attributes that you need to submit your products to Frugo are loaded. All right. Uh, you can see there is the product ID, SQID, GT, brand category, and all the required attributes. And you can see on the right side for the values, they're already configured in most cases. All right. 
but some of them are not. So let me just go over the ones that you need to configure yourself, all right? Now the product ID in the SKU is a pretty self-explanatory in WooCommerce. Uh, for GTIN, there is no default field available to save the GTIN such as UPC or EN or JN, uh, whichever unique identifier you may have. WooCommerce does not come with the default field uh, added to your product data. So what you can do is you can save this using a custom field within your products. Now our plugin has a feature where you can uh, add these custom fields easily and use these values no matter if it's a simple product or variants of variable products. All right, so I'll leave a link to a video in the description which describes how you can use the custom fields in Product Fit Manager for WooCommerce. All right, uh, once you have that saved, what you can do is you can click here and choose the custom field that you used within our plugin. So these are the name of the custom fields within our plugin. And since I'm using GTIN, I'll just choose WPFM product GTIN. All right. Now for the brand again, since there is no default field in WooCommerce, you can choose to save it in a custom field. Our plugin comes with a custom field for that. Or you can also save it in the attributes as a brand is common for variable products as well. So you don't need to worry about uh, assigning a custom field to variants. So for the brand name, you can choose to save it uh, as an attribute for your products and you can use that here. Now, that is in case if you have products from different brands, but if you are the sole manufacturer of all the products that you sell, in that case, it's ideal to set it as static and give the name of your company. Okay, now for the category I told you, you need to assign it with Frugo product categories, all right? But for that, you need to use the category mapping feature of a plugin, which I'll show you in a bit. So for now, you don't need to assign any value for the category. Now for the image URL, it's already assigned. For the stock status, we have by default added a static value of in stock. Uh, but if you want to include products uh, that are also out of stock, in that case, you can just change it to attribute and uh, choose this as stock status and that will work. But normally, we suggest that you only submit products to Frugo that are in stock, right? People actually get annoyed when they see there is a product there, but it's out of stock. So it's not really a best practice. All right, next comes the product title. It's already configured. The description is configured. Normal price with VAT is added here by default. In case you want to include normal price without VAT, you can remove this attribute and add a new attribute. And there you can assign the normal price without VAT, all right? Now the VAT rate is something you need to include manually. It should be common for the country where you're selling. So let's say if it's seven percent, you just write seven. No need to add the percentage here, all right? So once you have configured this, uh, accept the category, just leave it as it is. Just scroll up and click on publish. And once you click on publish, you'll see that the feed is generating. And once the feed is generated, you'll get this option to view or download the feed. Now the Frugo feed we have here is a CSV format, so you cannot actually view it here. You need to download it and view it using a CSV viewer. But before I show you how that works, first let me show you the category mapping, all right? So click on category mapping. And here you'll see that you'll get this option where all your categories are listed in one place and with a blank field beside each of them, okay? So what you need to do is you need to visit Frugo's category list and find out a matching category there that matches with your categories here, okay? So let's say uh, you have arts and crafts, you need to search for a category that matches with arts and crafts in the Frugo's category list. Let me just go over to Frugo's category list. So here, depending on which category your product is under, you have a different category list here, all right? So you can just quickly look for the ones you have and find out which category you want to use, all right? So let's say uh, I'm going to this one just to show you how this works. So this shows the category path of the categories under uh, animals, pets, and supplies. So let's say this one matches one of the categories in my feed, okay? So I'm just showing you hypothetically, but in your case, you need to make sure you choose the correct product category from Frugo and assign it to the right category in your store. Right. So let's say instead of arts and crafts, this was something else which matched the one I just copied. So all you need to do is paste it and leave it as it is. All right. So in the same way, you need to find matching categories for all of your store categories from the frugal category list. Okay. And then paste it in the field beside it. And once you're done, give a name to the mapper. Let's say 
frugal category. All right, and then scroll down to this list and click on save. Now, once this is saved, uh, if you scroll up, you'll see it's saved right here. If you click on it, it will expand and you can edit it anytime you want. Okay. So now once you're done with category mapping, it's time to use the category mapping value for your category paths in the feed. Okay. So just click on all product feed and here look for the feed you are creating. So I was creating frugal feed. So I'll edit this. And here you can see is the feed that I just generated earlier. So only the category was unassigned. So now before I assign the category fill, let me just click on purge cache. And after that, just scroll down and for the category, click on the value field and scroll to the very bottom. And here you'll find a section called category map. You can see I've created category mapping for different marketplaces earlier. And at the very bottom, this is the latest one, which is frugal category. Okay. So if I select this, this means that the category mapping will be applied to this feed as per the one I just created. All right. So now let me just update the feed. And this time the feed will now contain all the correct values for the required attributes for all my products. Now, since this is a CSV feed, I need to view it with a CSV viewer to see if this was uh, generated correctly. All right. So what you can do is you can download the feed and then view it using a CSV viewer. Now we use Zoho in our office and Zoho has this uh, spreadsheet program called Zoho Sheets, which I can use to import and view CSV files. So let me just import the CSV file I just generated. So this is the one I'll just put it right here and here the separator is comma. So I'll just click on next and I'll replace the current sheet. And you can see the feed has been generated with the required product attributes. Okay. Now you can see some of the fields are empty, such as the SQID or the EAN. That's because I did not assign any values to them in my uh, store as this is a test store. But in your case, you need to make sure you have real values over here. All right. Now for the category, you can see it's also blank in most cases, except one. Remember, I only assigned category mapping to one category in that list. So this was that list. This was that product for which the category was signed uh, through category mapping. And you can see this is the value I copied from Frugo and pasted it for that category. And this product falls under that category in my store. As a result, that product has a category mapped to this one instead of the one I had in my store. Okay. So the rest of them you can see are generated properly. For the description, you can see I have the HTML tags. Now it is advised not to use HTML tags when you submit the description. So in our feed, you can use the option strip tags, remove that. Let me quickly show you how that works. So in the feed, just go to the uh, feed configuration section and for description, this field is actually for sanitization. So just click on this and here just choose remove short codes and strip tags. So once you choose that and generate the feed, this means the feed will no longer have HTML tags in the descriptions. All right. So that's it. That's how easily you can generate a product feed for Frugo uh, using product feed manager for WooCommerce. The next thing to do is to upload this feed in your Frugo marketplace, uh, in your merchant account, and you will start seeing sales pretty soon. All right. So that's it for this video. If you face any issues, you can always knock our support team and we will try to assist you. All right. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in one of my future videos. Take care.